Okay, for, for me, the, the challenge is to connect the dots. Um, and this is a, the role of the EOSC Future Project in relation to the, to the SRIA. Um, just um, as introduction, and, and you, you probably know all this, open science often considered as a dogma, but I think we need open science to, to keep up with the digitization, with, with the uh, internet, with all the developments are going on, and we need a new way of doing science. For EOSC, I picked out, uh, I chose the, the items where it says the trust. It was already mentioned, uh, Carlos, this morning, and also by others. We need to have trust in the system. That is really essential uh, for, for realizing this EOSC. And if you look at the SRIA, and um, I, I just copy the structure of the SRIA, it's also good to realize this is more than just EOSC. It's on the open science. In this talk, I will focus on the EOSC because that, that's the, the topic of this presentation. But let, let's look at the principles of the structure of, of EOSC and what needs to be done. In the SRIA, there are these uh, key features and boundary conditions, and I will come back to them uh, in a minute. So. Um, uh, seven key features, seven boundary conditions. If I jump to the EOS Future project, we have three key parts. It's, it's a lot of technology. It's connecting, it's making use of previous EOSC-related uh, uh, projects. It's also building new architecture. It's, it's realizing this platform, the, the names have been mentioned before, the core, the exchange, but also the interoperability framework, because it's a federated system. It's connecting systems. And for that, for example, we need this interoperability framework. But it's also about bringing content. And content can, can be uh, services, can be data. So it, it, it can be from the, the, the s frees it can be from the national research infrastructures, institutional infrastructures. Uh, it can also be services provided by, by uh, so-called e-infrastructures where you can have easy access to computing power, to big storage, to the network. And it's about users. We, we do this for the researchers and in a later phase even to connect beyond researchers and, and go to, to government to, and, and to society at large. And for this in EOS Future we, we do a lot of effort on making data findable, uh, to store the data, reuse the data. I think this reusability and composability of data, so build data on existing data, is one of the key issues. There are the computing services. It's trying to make the workflows easier, as Karel said. And it's about integrating services, combining data with new services. And when you talk architecture, and I have to be careful here because one of the architecture, uh, architects is in the room, but then you get these kinds of, of uh, to, uh, pictures where you have the, the big parts, the EOSC exchange and core, the interoperability framework, but also support. It's, it's training, it's providing a help desk, it's, uh, it's collaboration with, with external parties. And Going back to the SRIA implementation, in blue I mentioned the, the topics that are being addressed uh, to greater or lesser extent in the EOS Future project. So, for example, on the identifiers, we, we do use this to do cataloging using the, the open air research graphs, for example. We have metadata, we have uh, authentication is a, is a big issue that if a user joins uh, or logs in to, to EOSC, then he or she can go to other infrastructures as well and doesn't need to log in over and over again. And the same goes for um, the boundary conditions, uh, rules of participation that, that's connected to the interoperability framework, but there are also there were already working groups in the uh, EOSC executive board that Karel mentioned. It's, it's still in the, in the working groups and task forces of, of the EOSC association. 
And on the landscape monitoring, I want to zoom in in a minute to, just to show how this uh, collaboration is, is going on. Um, back to the future project, it is um, structured around six thematic pillars. It has the policy and strategy. It has a lot of technology. It brings in the science where by, the, by the science clusters. There is procurement, uh, getting uh, standardized uh, facilities from the outside, but also new ways of services from, uh, from uh, non-profit, but also for profit uh, providers. And there is a lot of attention for skills and training and the whole uh, project builds on the user engagement. We have a large user group of scientists that, uh, that uh, comment, that reflect on what we are doing in the, in the project. If I zoom in on the policy and strategy and then the, the, the inputs for, for the SRIA, you can see that there is a cooperation between uh, ESG Future, but also with the Commission, the Steering Board, and the ESG Association, because we we saw all of us we we noticed that there were activities of doing surveys on readiness or on on, on uh, EOSC to to see where our countries, what is the monitoring. Carol mentioned this already, and the approach in the project was that we started to collaborate, to collaborate steering board, commission, association, and the project to set up this EOSC observatory. And this, this reduces um, the complexity and it prevents that you have three or four separate surveys going out with a lot of overlap. So this is just one example of where different stakeholders uh, started to, to work together. And in a similar way, there is the collaboration with the so-called 07 projects, which are uh, e-infrastructure projects on, on uh, Copernicus data, on, on storage, on uh, high-performance computing. And this is also being connected with, with the EOSC uh, future project. And data spaces have been mentioned, and there is currently no, no formal agreement uh, with, for example, Gaia-X, uh, but there is a lot of discussion going on in, in, on data spaces. And I want to zoom in on this identity and trust, which is also important for EOSC, and the sovereignty of data. I think especially on open data, it, we, we need to discuss the, the sovereignty. And I want to point at the, this uh, table, which says that uh, Gaia X, and I think, but perhaps that's for the discussion, uh, also the EOSC will have many platform owners. And that's a fundamental difference from uh, Facebook or the Twitter, where you have a single owner and the winner takes all. Uh, this is a kind of approach where you have many owners, where the architecture is federated, it, uh, and the platform is open. I think these are key features to, to take into account when we uh, further develop uh, uh, EOSC. Another co collaboration is with, uh, with Phoenix. Uh, it's on high performance computing, but also again we see the resemblance of how you deal with authentication, with access, uh, the, the way it's happening in Phoenix is similar uh, that, uh, how to do this in EOSC. So what you see is we have multiple connections, multiple collaborations. And I think that, that is one of the key features of, of the project. It's, it's not a single uh, standalone project. It, it has to reach out, reach out to stakeholders, reach out to, to strategic collaborations. And I think that that is one of the features of, uh, of the uh, future project. So my conclusions are, I see multiple federations popping up. And here, openness is key. We, we can see it in the data spaces, the high performance computing in EOSC itself. And we see multiple stakeholders working together on realizing EOSC. And that's not only on the technology, but it's also on the content, on the metadata, making uh, metadata, schemas, uh, metadata schemas comparable. It's, again, high quality of data. Otherwise, it's useless. 
and we have to connect the researchers and that means building on trust and the willingness to collaborate. And I think this morning with uh, the, the example of the University of Strasbourg, we all say, already saw an excellent example how you can realize this uh, critical mass. Thank you.